Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. You guys know what time it is. Time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And for those of you who like these type of videos, please remember to click like down below. If you're not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. But on to the point, and this isn't super current. This was about three months ago, I believe. But I had someone link me uh, this video from Patrick, who's basically the strongest vegan in the world, more or less. I think most people would agree with that. And I thought it was interesting. He's like, I, I think you'll find this interesting. You'll like this because this guy basically has to live on supplements. And this is kind of the point I make of the problems with stuff like vegan diets. And people are going to say, Patrick, you're like, guys, you guys know I'm not going to be able to say his name. I'm not even going to try. Um, it would probably be insulting to the guy if I personally even tried to pronounce his name. So I'm just going to skip on it. We're just going to call him Patrick. Uh, but the problem we come to with the whole vegan thing, and this is what I point out to people it's hard enough to be extremely healthy and a high-level athlete and perform and everything else. It's hard enough to do so. And this really, really exemplifies uh, my point with it. Okay, It really exemplifies it of why subject yourself to this. Uh, because the, the ethical arguments don't pan out. A lot of the environmental arguments don't pan out. It, it's not ideal, it's not healthy, and we ultimately become reliant upon the supplement industry if you even want to be a vegan and be healthy. And the vegans can argue about that all day long, but I have plenty of nutritional experts, registered dietitians, researchers, who I know talk about this stuff all the time. They're like, you can be healthy on a vegan diet. Okay, they're even saying that, like, but it will require significant amounts of supplementation. And the vegan diet is a modern phenomenon. Okay, it's a modern phenomenon. In other words, without the advent of a thriving supplement industry, veganism would not exist. And we need to make that clear. Um, and anyone who's done the vegan thing long term eventually start to realize this. Tons of them try to go through this idea that, oh, I can be fine without any vitamin or mineral supplements. I'll be fine until their health starts to completely deteriorate. It is simply not possible without dietary supplements to maintain ideal health on it. Now, they'll say, well, what about the standard American diet? Well, I'm not endorsing that either. And that's the problem. Is that that's, that is what they always come back to is that they look at the worst modern junk food diets and compare what they do to that versus an actual real healthy diet. Okay, that's an omnivore diet. And... That's the issue we run into with this. They, they don't want to actually compare a healthy diet. They just want to claim that what they do is better than the, st the average standard American diet, junk food diet. And arguably, it's not even always the case even there. Okay, Vegans don't even have lower rates of a lot of these diseases that everyone's concerned with than the average American does or the average Western diet in the same countries the vegans are in. They don't necessarily have less health issues as a result of it. So they don't even stack up that well frequently most of the time, at least statistically, against normal Western diets full of junk food. And uh, what you end up seeing is that vegan diets end up being a lot of that. In order to perform, you just take a large amounts of refined supplements. And that's exactly what we see with what Patrick's doing. Because you can't actually, technically, a true vegan diet with no supplementation, you can't live on that long term. For many people, you would actually develop enormous deficiencies that would harm you. And that's a reality. It's not me saying it. This is experts who say it, who don't have a political agenda. Uh, then you take someone like Patrick, and then we see what he has to do in terms of supplementation. I mean, he just opens up, bam, this big box of pills. And then people are going to say, but Jason, doesn't everyone do that? No, not all athletes do that. I'm a strength athlete. I don't do that. I don't take any vitamins. I don't take any vitamin supplements. Now, people will say, but there isn't so, there's some in your milk. Yeah, because I don't want to pay more for milk that doesn't have it added. In other words, if I'm going to get a nice quality store-bought milk, which whole milk is generally in America, it's a quality product. I have no problem drinking copious amounts of it. I'm not going to pay more money to have them remove the supplements that they've, they've been adding because the store-bought stuff has that. And that's because there are dietary deficiencies out there and they find this is the cheapest, easiest way to do that. And some of it, I'm not going to get into the whole background, but there, there is a entire reason that it has to do with uh, ethnic diversity and everything else in Western countries as to why some of these foods are added. All right? it, it's there for a reason. Not everyone technically even needs those. 
So, over to the point. Um, I am not even doing that because I'm not consuming these products because they have them in there. I would be perfectly fine if they weren't added. Like, I'm not actually worried. Uh, so, I'm, but I'm not willing to pay an extra $2 a day year round, uh, you know, spend an extra $1,000 per year to have milk without the vitamins added because it would cost me more money for no reason. The vitamins aren't going to hurt me. But if I just didn't drink milk, then I wouldn't have any vitamin fortified foods. Nothing I eat would have fortified vitamins if I simply removed the milk from my diet. So we look at what this guy has to do, and it's this big pile of pills, and he has to take them. And that is something that even the leading dietitians, when they meet vegans, are like, no, you have to take these things. Like, this is not optional. It's not optional. Um, and, you know, but you'll get vegans who will defend that and say, well, we, they give cows B12, not in Texas. They don't. What are you guys talking about? In certain places, they give cows B12. They don't do it where I live. You know why? Because we have a healthy environment to raise cows in. Our cows don't develop B12 deficiencies here out in our fields eating. It doesn't happen. They don't have that problem. It's in certain climates they give cows a B12 supplement. They don't do it here where I live. And I know plenty of cattle ranchers who have been on the ranch. Nobody does it. Someone might somewhere here, but I've never met such a person. Okay, I've never met a rancher who actually does that. Not how it works here. We have a healthy environment to raise the animal in. So they'll, they'll make statements like that, and they'll talk about, well, meat eaters are sometimes B12 deficient. Well, I'm not. And athletes that I know aren't. We don't need these things. Not necessary. But vegans, you have to. Right? And, and this has been proven. This is known. Even pro-vegan registered dietitians tell vegans, you have to take these things. It's going to hurt you if you don't. It's a requirement. Okay? So we're coming over to the point, this guy has to have this big pile of pills. And then the same thing, you know, it's like, he acts like, oh, I get so much of my food from my backyard. But not really, because he's having to consume copious amounts of protein shakes. Copious amounts. It's just like all day long. Vegan protein shakes, vegan protein shakes. Why? Because he can't get enough protein to meet his needs as an athlete on a vegan diet. He just can't. He's having to pound down protein shakes. And then we come over to that point of bioavailability. And people forget this. They don't understand that athletes and really fit people, we do benefit from higher and higher protein intakes. And it does go higher. There are benefits. And particularly as you get past a certain age threshold, we find that protein needs become greater in terms of benefit for connective tissue recovery. You need to keep loading it higher. Um, and people say, well, that's only people who are training and lifting, which should be every person on earth, because let's come over to that point. The data tells us that you need to train vigorously and for strength if you want to be healthy and fit into your old age. The data is overwhelming at this point. So being a serious lifter, not necessarily competitive, but being serious about your strength training is actually mandatory for optimal health. And that's what we're talking about here. We are talking about optimizing health and performance and longevity and all of these factors. And, and that does require high protein intakes. Let's come over to the point. The amount of calories he eats versus the protein he has to take in to get what he needs is astronomical. He's having to consume over 400 grams of plant-based protein every day to, to actually fuel his performance and recovery. That's what he has to do. You could do 200. You could do 250 if it's animal source. Okay, because it is a bioavailability issue. It is an absorption issue. You cannot absorb it. It's not that they're not complete, because that's the, the misargument that's been made. And then it's a, that's an argument that vegans can absolutely trash, because they're right. Plant proteins are complete proteins, all right? They do get generally, there are exceptions, you know, like rice protein's an exception. But generally speaking, most plant proteins, they actually do have all the essential amino acids. They are present. It may not always be in ideal ratios, but they are certainly present to a, to a greater or lesser degree. They are complete proteins for the most part. Uh, so that's a myth. But they do have a much, much lower absorption rate through the GI tract. Okay? There's absorption issues. And so we're talking about sometimes 50 to 60% of the absorption that you would get from animal source protein, so your ability to get to it. In other words, you have to double the protein. 
In short, if you know that you need for optimal recovery and training and everything else X amount of animal protein, you probably are going to have to double it as a vegan. And then that's the other issue. He has to supplement so many things because he's eating a very, very high calorie vegan diet. And it's all this roughage in plants and, and other things. And it, it tends to be an amount of fiber and other things that's going to block the absorption of a lot of your vitamins and minerals. Right? It's going to block the absorption. So he has to go back and eat larger amounts of refined foods to get the absorption. He's have to take multivitamins and everything else to make sure he gets everything because you're going to run into absorption issues because of the amount of fiber and other things that are in there blocking it. So he ultimately ends up eating a very, very high supplement, very high processed food diet, even though, yes, he's got whole foods in there. It ends up having to be a pretty refined diet that relies enormously and massively on supplements. He's basically just consuming supplements all day long. And that's the point we come to. Heavy animal-based diets that happen to incorporate plenty of plants, stuff like I do, we don't require any supplements. I take one supplement right now, one, creatine. It's cheap, costs $20 a year. And it's of questionable value. And, it, and I don't even take it for the performance benefits because I don't actually see them personally. The, the, they show in the research. But I take it because there is some data showing cognition in the long term. It can seem to reduce Alzheimer's and dementia rates, which runs in my family. So that combined with some data showing it does work, it's like I'll, I'll dish out $20 a year. But that's what I supplement. Okay, I'm able to get everything that I need because I'm willing to do an animal-based diet, which includes a lot of vegetables. Like me personally, I live on dairy, which would include meat and eggs, whole dairy, meat, and piles of green vegetables. And that's what I live on. And because of that, I don't require any supplements. I get my 250 grams of protein a day plus without any supplements. I don't need any vitamin or mineral supplements. I don't have to have a multivitamin. I don't have to take B12. We don't need any of these things. It's just not necessary for me to optimize this as an athlete. And I think that's the difference. And, and this is what I see when I look at this is the case of this guy just has to pound down supplements all day long. Now, people will also say, well, but he shows that you can do it as a vegan. Yeah, but you need to look back in the 90s. He was obviously already a chemically enhanced bodybuilder. Right, look back at the, obviously on quite a bit of stuff. He built a lot of that muscle back then, and even today, he still uses you know, obviously a hefty amount of stuff combined with a diet that requires you to use enormous amounts of supplements. And so, that's then what these vegans are describing as their model health. It's like he's not even eating a, a food based diet, his diet is just enormous piles of processed supplements and requiring massive amounts of vitamin supplements. Okay, that, that doesn't help your case at all. If anything, this shows that, yeah, it just doesn't really work. Vegan diets are, are ludicrous at this point for people who are serious uh, about fitness and performance because you're not going to do it with your diet. It ends up being a supplement-based diet because a vegan diet itself cannot provide what you need. It can't provide what you need to be a, a truly top athlete. All right, guys, so that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.